uh, and like uh, anyway, uh, I won't get into that. But uh, uh, one day maybe we'll talk about Kevin Owen. <laughs> but uh, it's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you uh, you did have a fan that wanted uh, me to ask you about a comment that he said about you, but I understand you you don't want to talk about that just yet. Devin, I'm gonna I'll, I'll 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 say something about it. Kevin reminds me of me when I was young. I had an organization in Quebec where. I was selling out all my arenas, the Spectacle Familial Jacques Rougeau. It was a family oriented show. I had shows that was five, four, five thousand people in every show we had. And and, and I only had like uh, eight shows a year. But I went and sold the tickets everywhere and I went to see the companies and I promised every company, everybody you see on that card, the faces you see, they're gonna be there for the show. And and, and it was special for me. And 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 Kevin. He wanted to learn something else. He was with me for four or five years. I taught him everything I knew in the business. What a great talent. As far as talent, great talent. He was always there in the wrestling school waiting for everybody to learn. I taught to him because he was always ahead of everybody. But my rule in my company was you work for me, you don't work for anybody else. And here's the reason why. A lot of the boys were, were pissed at that. But I was saying, guys, you don't understand. Especially like Kevin. He was a great talent, a great match on my car. I don't want you to go wrestle on Friday night in front of 50 people in a church basement and, and hurt your leg. And then we go in front of 5,000 people and you don't show or you can't work because you did an indie for $50 or for some. So, so that was the reason why it was only that when I went into companies, I had talent and I promised the talent would be there. And I didn't want any injuries to happen because being in the WWF, I know that I had a lot of injuries. I seen a lot that we didn't expect. We're never expected injuries. So that was how I protected my business. And then Kevin, he, uh, he, uh, he decided to leave. That was okay. The problem is the way he did it. I'm sure I don't need to get into that. So he uh, he came to my last press conference to announce a show that he was going to be there, which he never showed up. And he was already gone. And then from then on, he went to the WWF, who I had quite a few enemies in the office. <laughs> like, you know, I left I left them. They didn't kick me out. I left them. And, 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 and a lot of people held a grudge against me for leaving there. So, so a lot of the people in the office that were giving Kevin Owen a push, they were also putting him up to date on how I wasn't a good guy and how they were turning him against me. And they were having him go in promos. You could go into this, Devin. And I was hearing some stuff like, hey, Jacques, Kevin Owen just blasted you on, on one of the big, big shows. That they have. Like, yeah, I worked for Jacques Rougeau, but I... I, I didn't learn much, and we were working in a flea market. You know, can you believe that school? And, and, and once in a while, he'd show up. He's talking about me. Once in a while, he'd show up, and that's when he was there. Sometimes he was there, like almost like he was insinuating that I wasn't straight. When he said that, it was like to myself, I said, I said to myself, I, I never talked to that guy. I never did nothing. I never talked bad about him, but I said to myself, Kevin, there's a word in life that you're going to learn. And it's called karma. And what you send on other people, what you do to other people, it won't come back from the same people you did it to, but it's going to come back to you. And, and, and that's karma. And so I say to myself, to Kevin Owen, you're a great talent. Kevin. You're a young pup. You were intimidated by some decisions you took because you and me, we always got along good. Even the last night we were together, you left. We shook hands. So from then on, if you decided to hate me and all turn against me, that was your business. But the bottom line is to go and criticize a place like the Marché aux Puces Métropolitain in Montreal, where, Devin, I got to give you a scoop here for three years. I'm going to say four, but I'll say three years to make sure. I had a free rent there. It didn't cost me anything. I was indoors and there was a big flea market. It was indoors and people were walking about 5,000 people walking in there and they were seeing us practice. It was good publicity for us. But the bottom line is we had a place for free. And, and once you leave my little league and you go into the big leagues, you don't go nationwide to tell people, hey, that place, the flea market, could you imagine and cut people down? Because we were there to help you and we created you. We built you. We did all that together and you helped us. You helped me. And so, so I think Kevin 
probably by this time, he's going to realize that I don't hate the guy. I, I like the guy. I really like him. But I had rules in my company that had to be respected. And I didn't want a guy to go get hurt and not show up in my show. And so everything made sense and logic. I'm, I, I'm almost going to go as far as saying that maybe Kevin one day will even call me or, or send me a letter like, hey, Jacques, you know, I, you got some right in what you said. You know, maybe I went a little too far, but that would be nice to get a message from him because I did nothing but help that kid. Nothing but help him. He also said in an interview, too, that he trained me more than you trained me. And I can honestly say every single day I came there, you were in the rig training us. So I, I don't know where that came from either. I think he was just trying to tarnish my image. And I, he had a great position to do it. He was seen worldwide. So he just, and he was making Vince happy and making all the guys who wanted to give me a shot. So he was just a messenger. But, but I think that he'll learn one day that he's going to be also the one who's going to be getting the messages <laughs> because it's, it's each our own turn. And, you know, and when they don't need you anymore, and when it, you become just a number. And then he has to come back home and face the people that he, he said things about me and stuff like that. So, but I'm an old man. Who cares? Right, Devin? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.